Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, the Sphinx of Guatemala. The resemblance of the Sphinx of Guatemala rock formation is uncannily similar to the Sphinx of Giza in Egypt. Then again, it depends on your own imagination. Some say it's the face of a woman, while others think it looks more like a gorilla. The one thing that everyone agrees on is that there is clearly a face in the rock. The Guatemalan Sphinx is located in a remote part of the jungle. According to local legends, the cliff that the face is etched out of used to be called El Sacrificadero, meaning it was a place where sacrifices were made to thank the gods of the earth. These days, it's called Cerro Mirandilla. Near the mysterious Sphinx, archaeologists discovered cave paintings potentially left behind by the Maya civilization. This was almost definitely an important place to the ancient culture who lived here. Unfortunately, the origin of the rock is still unknown. Researchers can't be sure if it was carved by human hands or if it's a natural formation. It could just be a coincidence that it looks like the Sphinx in Egypt. The Sphinx of Guatemala is also eerily similar to the face of Harakbut in the Amazon. The face of Harakbut is another mysterious cliff that looks a lot like a face. Could it be possible that the two have some kind of ancestral connection? Number 9. The Miracle Rings of the Magic Bishops In Spain, the Santo Estevo de Rivas de Sil Monastery in Orense was recently restored. During the restoration work, the workers found a mysterious urn hidden within an altarpiece. Inside the urn was a silk bag decorated in gold thread. Inside that bag were four very special rings. The discovery is mind-blowing. Four silver rings in a tiny bag hidden underneath an altarpiece. The rings may have belonged to bishops believed to have miraculous healing powers. The legend of the rings is connected to the legend of nine powerful bishops who supposedly operated out of the monastery in the 16th century. Each bishop had their own silver ring. They were known for being particularly holy and having the power to heal the sick. When the bishops died, their corpses were put inside the church to be venerated. Their bodies are still in the church, but the rings were missing. Legend has it the rings were placed inside a special silver box. As time wore on, people began to believe the power of the bishops lay within the rings. The chest would be removed from the church whenever an important woman was giving birth. It was thought that if the rings were near, no harm would come to the baby or the mother. All of this miracle stuff would have been going on in the 17th century after the bishops were dead. But at some point, the rings went missing. Now, four of them have been found in an urn, hidden for several hundred years. But where are the other rings? Number 8. Mysterious Florida Shipwreck Archaeologists were recently sent to Daytona Beach in Florida after a fierce storm revealed a shipwreck from the 19th century. According to Fox 35 Orlando, the debris was initially discovered after Hurricane Nicole blew through the area in late 2022. State archaeologists strapped on their boots and headed to the beach to investigate the incredible piece of wreckage. They think this ship comes from the late 1800s. It appears to be a merchant vessel, about 80 feet long and totally decayed. There's nothing left except old timbers that have been riding in the sand for decades. It was a busy day at the beach for researchers. They had to dig a trench around the buried structure to get a better idea of it. They found joints and ribs and pieces of carved wood. They believe the ship was private, but nobody knows its name. It may have been ferrying manufactured goods along the coast. It could have been traveling back and forth from the Caribbean. Maybe all it had for cargo was fruit being delivered to the wealthy Americans in Florida. Christopher McCarran, a maritime archaeologist, compared the merchant vessel to an Amazon delivery truck. That was how busy the merchants were back then, with dozens and dozens of ships moving constantly along the coast. They had a responsibility to bring goods to every corner of civilization. And now for number 7, but first, it's shout out time! I want to give a big thank you to Mitch Michelle and Brianna Ashwood for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about strange recent discoveries. Number 7. Life in Prehistoric Saxony 300,000 years ago, a family of humans stopped by a lake near an open forest. It's not clear what they were doing at the lake. Maybe they were there to drink fresh water or take a dip. Perhaps they were there to forage for food, but they certainly weren't alone. Their footprints were discovered at the Schoningen Paleolithic site in Lower Saxony, Germany. 
Researchers believe the footprints likely belong to an ancient family of Homo heidelbergensis. They are the only ancient human species known to have lived in Europe during the time when the footprints were made. Two out of the three tracks are from children. The other set appears to be from an adult. Dr. Flavio Altamura from the University of Tübingen says depending on what time of year it was, they may have been foraging for fruits or mushrooms. I said earlier that they weren't alone, and that's the truth. Researchers found other footprints nearby, left behind by some gigantic beasts. Straight tusked elephants that grew to over twice the size of a woolly mammoth. These ancient elephants were doubly as huge as the biggest African elephant alive right now. Just try to imagine how crazy that would have been to forage for mushrooms while a skyscraper-sized elephant was taking a bath 40 feet away. They can't say if the human family and these straight-tusked elephants were at the watering hole at the exact same time. But what archaeologists do know is that Neanderthals hunted the huge elephants. It could be that Homo heidelbergensis did too, but nobody has found any evidence of that. Our much earlier ancestors may have been a little more peaceful than Neanderthals and a little friendlier to their giant neighbors. Number 6. The Rune Under the Kitchen A couple in Denmark made an amazing discovery during a recent home renovation project. They were planning to remove the old linoleum floor in the kitchen. It was going to be an easy job. No archaeologists required. But the easy job turned into something much more when Lean Brandt and her husband, Anders, found a rune stone beneath the floor. This wasn't just a little rune that you could pick up and hold in your hand. The stone under the floor was a whopping 2,000 pounds. It had to be lifted out of the house with a crane. Nobody expected such a remarkable discovery. The local museum declared it a national treasure and are currently trying to figure out how old it is. Determining the age is going to be critical in understanding what the engraved runes on the stone say. Right now, they seem to be referencing a person named Bjorn or Burke. Experts aren't sure. They need to do a lot of work to figure it out. The stone was found near the city of Randers. It isn't all that uncommon, as there have been about 44 rune stones discovered in the same area. This particular stone appears to be older than most. It could be from the 8th century AD, which would make it one of the earliest rune stones right before the Viking Age. Number 5. The Impossible Statue The Impossible Statue of Ancient Egypt is a sculpture made from limestone. It depicts a young boy pharaoh sitting on somebody's lap. The face has been broken off the somebody, so it's not clear who that person was. The only thing researchers really know is that they were not royalty. The reason it's called the Impossible Statue is that Egyptian pharaohs were never depicted with ordinary citizens. This might be the only example of artwork showing a pharaoh with a commoner. It's currently housed in National Museum Scotland. Margaret Maitland, the principal curator at National Museum Scotland, wanted to identify the mystery figure in the sculpture. She went deep into the archives to learn where it came from. She learned that it was excavated near the Valley of the Kings in the 1850s. Scottish archaeologist Alexander Rind was the man responsible. Then Margaret looked at other sculptures found in the same area and from the same period. She came across something truly shocking. In the vicinity of Deir el Medina, pharaohs were depicted in ways that were forbidden everywhere else in Egypt. Starting in 1279 BC, a very unusual cult flourished at Deir el Medina, a cult dedicated to the king of Egypt. People began constructing statues of the mighty pharaoh Ramses II, consorting with lowly peasants. This was done here and nowhere else. Margaret Maitland believes it was an effort for the king to be more socially acceptable. Ramses may have been trying to cultivate devotion to himself by letting people carve statues of him with members of the community. Number 4. The Creepy Mongolian Rock a rock dated to about 42,000 years old was recently discovered in Mongolia. It's a fairly unremarkable rock at first glance. It doesn't look particularly exciting, but experts believe it could be the oldest handcrafted phallus-shaped artifact on the planet. The strange stone was found in the Kangai Mountains at a site called Tolbor. Ancient people lived here during prehistoric days. They left behind Paleolithic rock art and burial grounds, and petroglyphs are hidden throughout the mountains too. Professor Solange Rigaud from the University of Bordeaux was the man responsible for finding the carved piece of graphite 
that he thinks looks so incredibly inappropriate. It was discovered sitting next to an eggshell pendant and some beads. But the strangest part of all is that the artifact may have come from far away. There isn't exactly an abundance of graphite around Tolbor. It was likely carved somewhere else and then traded to whoever lived in this part of Mongolia. That person wore the pendant on the end of a string around their neck. But not all the archaeologists are convinced. Curtis Runnels from Boston University doesn't think the pendant is shaped like a phallus at all. He says that it's like seeing a face in a cloud. In other words, Professor Rigaud is seeing male reproductive organs where there aren't any. Curtis says there are so many other things it could be. For example, a mushroom, a wooden bowl, or it may have been a tool. What do you think the strange piece of graphite looks like? Let me know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 3. Recreating a Forgotten Face 1,300 years ago, a girl who lived in Great Britain was ceremoniously laid to rest. She was buried with the utmost care, entombed with great treasures. She was given a cross embedded with gold and garnets. Then she was forgotten, until researchers recently uncovered her burial site south of Cambridge near Trumpington. Her grave was found in 2012. But it was only recently that scientists started to make real headway on learning who the mystery girl was. After a lot of scientific investigation, researchers learned the teenager was about 16 years old when she died. She lived during the 7th century AD. The girl and her family most likely entered England after a brutal journey through the southern German Alps. Her ornately decorated cross proves that she was an aristocrat. She may have even been minor royalty. Seeing as this was in the 600s, she could have belonged to one of the earliest Christian converted families, but researchers don't have any specific details. As for how the young girl died, it may have been from the move. An analysis of her DNA showed that she suffered a dramatic decline in health after arriving in the UK. With less access to good protein, she probably got sick and passed away. Researchers are so obsessed with this girl that they recreated her face. They used all the technology at their disposal to bring this girl back to life after over a thousand years. Dr. Sam Leggett from the University of Edinburgh said it was strangely emotional to see her face after so many years of studying her skeletal remains. Number 2. Artificial Intelligence in Ancient Arabia Researchers in Arabia have been using artificial intelligence to study ancient stone structures in the desert. The barren wastelands of Saudi Arabia are poorly studied, but by employing AI, researchers think they'll be able to find important discoveries much faster. The team of researchers is made up of people from a lot of different institutions, places like the Image and Video Understanding Laboratory and the KAUST Artificial Intelligence Initiative. The team created software that is able to automatically detect forgotten stone structures in the desert by looking at pictures of the land taken by satellites. Satellites scan the landscape and then the AI detects where there are ruins from ancient civilizations. Then all the archaeologists have to do is go in and check for themselves. The most recent discovery made by the team was a series of mustatils from around 6000 BC. These were structures used by ancient people in Saudi Arabia to catch animals. They were gigantic traps, which functioned to gather whole herds of beasts to be slaughtered. It's hard to imagine it today, but this whole region was once a lot more of a thriving paradise. The AI is helping to reveal the truth of Arabia's prehistoric hunters. Number 1. Armor in a Spanish Castle Castillo de Matilla is a ruined castle from the 14th century in Spain, located in Salamanca. A team of archaeologists were recently digging through the armory of the ancient castle when they came across a full suit of armorer. The armor dates back to the 16th century. It's been lost in the armory for over 400 years. The castle is not in particularly good shape. It's a sad, crumbling ruin with hardly anything to even suggest it was once a mighty stronghold. Researchers have been excavating the interior and exterior since the start of 2023. They found what might have been an entrance, a couple of towers, and the armory. The armory contained a few weapons, such as an old crossbow and a knife, but the suit of armor is particularly impressive. It's made of 50 individual pieces, each one totally functional. Elbow pads, breastplate, helmet, greaves, everything you would expect to wear as a 16th century Spanish knight. What would you do with your own suit of ancient armor? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching! 
Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon. Bye!